Hello friends, welcome to lecture 5 of Digital Signal Processing. In this lecture we will study about frequency domain representation of discrete time signals and systems. Uh, this lecture can serve as a motivation to study on Fourier transform. So let's start. Okay. So in the previous lecture uh, we have studied about LTI systems. Okay. And there it is described that in an LTI system an input signal uh, can be represented as a weighted sum of delayed impulses. Okay. So in the same way the output can also be represented as a weighted sum of delayed impulse responses. Okay, this is an impulse function while I will not write the expression I will just for simplicity summation bk impulse response a delayed impulse response basically uh, we will uh, do more math as we go forward uh, so one more point that uh, in an LTI system uh, sinusoidal and complex exponential play a very important role okay because a complex exponential is an eigen function of an LTI system okay what do we mean by this let's assume that there is an LTI system whose input is a sinusoid function of omega of frequency omega c. The output will also be a sinusoidal function of frequency omega c. The frequency will be same except the amplitude and phase are determined by the system okay yeah so this eigen function thing applies to both okay so the fundamental property of LTA system makes representation of signals in terms of sinusoids or complex ex or complex exponential very useful in linear system theory and this is also the foundation of Fourier representation Okay, so let's dig more uh, on the eigenfunction part. The eigenfunction for LTI system. So consider an input. Xn as a complex exponential signal okay so the output can be written like this where hk is the impulse response of the system okay now we are are dealing with more maths here uh, yeah this will be only greater than we can write this as e to the j omega and summation k equals to minus uh, hk to the minus j omega k k so this is the impulse response where well, hk is the impulse response this we can write as h e j omega this is the impulse response of a discrete time system so the impulse response h e j omega is equals to summation over k 
hk e to the minus j omega k okay okay now the main thing uh, the output input relation y n equals to h e j omega e to the j omega n okay let's write it again on the next page y n equals to h e j omega e to the j omega n so the input was h uh, the the input is a complex exponential and the output is also depending on uh, the input or we can basically write an input at output like y equals to lambda times x okay so therefore this is an eigen function and this is the eigen value this also describes change in amplitude and phase as a function of frequency and we as we well already told that this is a frequency response of the system okay so in general the frequency response is a complex number which can be broken into its real part and imaginary part which can be written like this or it can be written as magnitude and phase response okay this is a magnitude response and this is the phase response okay now let's try to calculate uh the frequency response of ideal delay system okay the input output relationship can be written like this where nd is just a fixed integer so if the input is a complex exponential there the output will be to the j and minus nd or we can write it like this okay so get some picture here this is our impulse response okay so for any value of omega we obtain an output that is input multiplied by a complex constant which depends on frequency omega and delay nd okay yeah another important property or another important one important distinction in discrete time system and a continuous time system is for discrete time system for discrete time system the dt represents discrete time system discrete time the impulse response is periodic with period equals to 2 pi okay hmm yeah i mean let's try to prove it we write uh, the impulse response like this let's replace omega by omega plus 2 pi then this will be summation over n h n e to the power minus j n omega plus 2 pi we can write this as 
टू द माइनस छ ओमेगा एन ए टू द माइनस छ टू पाई एन दिस नंबर विल बी इक्वल्स टू वन सो दिस इज नथिंग बट एच एन टू द माइनस छ ओमेगा एन और बेसिकली एच ऑफ ई जे ओमेगा Let me rewrite this. H e j omega plus two pi. Let's say r. R is any integer because the period, if the period is two pi, in a, it will be same for four pi, six pi. Uh, basically, the multiple of multiples of two pi. Okay. So, yeah. So since the impulse response is periodic with period two pi. we need to only specify the impulse response over an interval of length 2 pi okay so that interval can be either from 0 to 2 pi or minus pi to pi so these two intervals mm, are used interchangeably in the literature uh, let's try to visualize this periodic mm, property so for a low pass filter for a low pass filter the impulse response looks like this for a certain frequency range it is some constant value and it repeats this is 2 pi Will repeat here. This is minus two pi. This will be two pi plus omega c, two pi minus omega c, minus two pi plus omega c, minus two pi minus omega c, and somewhere here it will be minus pi plus pi and so on. Okay, so you can see here that the impulse response in frequency domain is periodic. Okay. now one one more important point that if we are representing our frequency range as minus pi to pi then in that case the frequency is near minus pi mean these minus pi or pi are the high frequency terms are the high frequency values and the frequencies near zero are low frequency okay so this point you should keep in mind okay 